So welcome to the third part of the Samhain Seance Workshop. Tonight, we are doing the craft portion of the final leg of the event. Now, I'm going to start this off by saying we have made your effigy. You have made your wreath. Tonight, we will, we will discuss making your braid, okay? This is a weaving exercise. And if you have ever been present with me, you know that I'm a huge advocate of weaving in spell work and crafting and all those things. I've talked about using your cord over and over again and the importance of braiding your own cord, <clears throat> not buying one from someone else, not taking someone else's magic. This is something that a worker should know how to do. So I'm not judging you if you don't know how to do this, but any of us that have had experience as a little girl or experience with little girls know the one thing they love to do is have their hair braided, correct? Most of us wear braids for protection, which is pretty common as a witch. So I'm going to select some simple things, but I'm going to discuss with you why I use simple things, okay? So this is a rope that you can easily get at your dollar trees, okay? You're gonna get it looking like this. It's gonna be braided up and it's called coastal rope. And it will be sealed on the end. I just cut the end off and I don't know where I laid it. Of course, and there goes my scissors. Welcome to crafting with sissy. <laughs> okay, so you cut the end off. There's this end and this is all wound together when you get it, all right? So you're going to separate these out. Why? Because number one, you don't need to braid enough to save yourself from a pit. You're braiding something that you can work with. Okay. So how much do I have? This hand to this hand. So spread your arms out the highest point. That's how much rope you need. Do you understand? Because the idea of this is you're going to take it around one wrist. You know, take it around the other wrist. And you are going to hold your hands like this when you're spell casting. Do you see this? This is to create a bonded prayer rope. It is for the purpose of linking yourself as an eternal circle. Not that your arms are loose. It is from bringing the intention from your right path to your left-handed path into the crossroads. You are going to a liminal pass. You need to have a liminal point where you're working. So some of us in our liminal point, we put a bead or we put a charm or we put something in the center of the rope. I mark mine with wax. It is from the candle that I'm burning for the spell work. After this is braided and all the adornments are on it, I'll dip it in the wax and I'll mark that as my half point. Sometimes I put my hair there I wrap my hair around that half point because I want to have an ancestor tie. I want to have something that my ancestors can see me with. I'm working with them in a candle. There are herbs there. There are things there that we need to focus on and work with. Now, in this aspect of the workshop, I'm going to ask you to focus on poppy seeds and mustard seeds. Okay? Both very indicative of the underworld both very resonant with Nyx and ancestor work. Another option at this point is tobacco. So if you have access to fresh tobacco, so I know a lot of you are like, I'm not a smoker. Okay, well, let me tell you how this works. <clears throat> There's these little cigars at the smoke shop. They sell for like $2 a pack, okay? Go get a pack of them, throw them in your apothecary. And when you need tobacco, slice them down the side and pull that tobacco out, okay? You can buy small amounts of rolling tobacco or anything like that. You're not going to get tobacco of worth at a witch shop. They're not going to have it. These are things where you need to learn to source. If you're going to do ancestor work, you got to source ancestor things. Now, I know the question that's going to come. It's not going to be from any of you, I don't think. What about cannabis? What about cannabis? What about it? I said tobacco. Tobacco and cannabis are two different things. I am going to say something in this section of the workshop, and it is going to make me very unpopular what I'm about to tell you. Don't be high. Don't be drunk. Don't be under the influence. 
when you do this work. Have the respect to go to your ancestors sober, calm, and centered. <clears throat> and I know that's not going to make me very popular with some people. Oh, why do all my work under the influence? Well, get your head out your ass and get sober and give your ancestors the best you to focus on. I have a real problem at this time of year because this isn't a time to hide in your shadow or go into your liminal presentation of yourself that you understand to do this work. We are coming open and honest and authentic to meet our ancestors, to find out what needs to change. And if you are altered when you're meeting them, are you really the, you? So this is something, you're going to get some shadow work prompts here. If you had that veil paper, you're going to understand what I'm talking about. These are some really intense things. <clears throat> if you did not get the veil paper on Samhain and you wish to have it, the only reason I took the price up was to deter people from other areas coming in and grabbing the PDF. I wanted people that were here to get it. If you weren't able to get it, just write me a message on Facebook or personally, and I'll make sure you get the PDF, okay? Because your people in this group and your people doing this work. Those prompts are very important. All of the things I have been giving you this whole time is for this workshop. The last ancestor workshop is for this workshop. Centering in and working on it is really, really excessive. I need you to be sober. I need you to be you. I need you to be authentic. And I need you to be raw. So if you're coming into this and you're you're visibly shook at the work you're doing, you're at least feeling the work you're doing. Somewhere along the line, we have mistaken cool, calm, and collected for magical. That is not magical. That is composure. They're two different things. How you present means nothing to your ancestors. How you present means nothing in ritual. I sat on TikTok yesterday and I listened to a whole group of women over the age of 40 discuss what they thought magic was and discuss how they thought magic should be done. And I'm going to tell you right now how I feel about it. It's absolute fucking bullshit. This is not a show. We're not here doing a play and act two is over and act three is over. It's not what we're doing. We're fucking digging deep to grow and process. And if you're not willing to grow and process and dig deep, you're going to miss what your ancestors have for you because they don't speak, speak your new age lingo. I assure you, when people went into trance-like states in our ancestry, they weren't using cannabis. They were using nightshade. And they were using Wolfsbane. And they were using peyote. They weren't fucking around with little drugs. We do little drugs compared to what the world does now. I hate to say it, but it's the truth. And when you step into this space, you really need to understand that that is important. And it's the way it is. You just have to move into that aspect. So when you are stepping forward and you are moving into these places, you really need to hold to the aspect, I need to be sober and at my best. So sit back, think about what you want to do. Your rope is an expression of you. So what are you going to do? Okay. I have gathered pieces of sorry that I have laying around. I have pieces of string laying around. I have spell bottles that I add to my rope. I have lots of different things that get put into these, these things. And when I look at this situation and I look at how it works, I step into the aspect of what am I weaving for? Consider colors. Consider charms. Consider different forms of materials that you can ro rope into here. I know women who put pieces of their hair already braided into their ropes. And when you look at these, you're going to really move forward. So you see the one I have hanging back here on my wall. That's my vulva rope. So when I do solstices, that's the rope I use. Caroline has a rope sitting on the altar right now. That is her initiation rope. So that will be her rope to use in her spell workings. So I know 
you're like, what, 35 plus and you don't got a rope? She's 11. Just saying. Does the brownie have a rope and you don't have a rope? Time to get a rope, ladies. The other thing you consider this is to put a tag lock onto this rope. A piece of your magical meaning that when you are working in the liminal, you recognize it in the liminal and you recognize it in the reality. So when you grab it, it pulls you out. Some of us have a really hard time ascending when we descend. Have you not figured out that seances are descents? Because they're descents. These are controlled descents. You make the decision of you do the meditation when you want. You make the decision of when you go in when you want. These are descents of your own making. These are not weak and they are not for the lazy. Clear? So when you are doing a descent, you really have to look into that. So does anybody have questions about the braid thus far? You're all pretty clear? Okay, so the next aspect is you're going to braid your rope. After you've braided your rope, you're going to wrap it around your candle and you're going to burn your candle for two to three days. Don't burn your rope. Activate your rope, but don't burn your rope. Okay. If you do burn your rope, I guess that's the way the universe wanted it. So when you're burning your rope, we need to focus in and make sure we're doing what we need to do to burn it. So you need to anoint a candle, have it sitting, have the intention there written below it on a piece of paper, activate your rope to be your liminal bind, to be your passage to the underworld, and how you're using it. Oh, did I let that slip? Your passage to the underworld. This is how you cross the rivers to get to the crossroads. Do you think your ancestors walk around up here? They're gone. They've passed. If you want to meet them, you got to go meet them. So many people are looking for their ancestors to walk around their house and talk to them. This is an actual voyage of descent. You're going to where they are. You're carrying the, you're carrying the bones to the water to cross. So what's going to be your water to cross? Are you going to have a bowl of water to do this ritual? Are you actually going to go to water to do this ritual? Are you going to sit lakeside to do this ritual? Are you just going to have a cup of water that represents? What is going to be your water element of this? Because we all know there's a line of water between us and the underworld, correct? When you are thinking of this water aspect of your craft, how is it going to work? To get you there? That's the other question. Zoom is taking me in and out of this PDF as fast as I can go. It's dropping me out of the picture. They're putting me back in. We'll just continue on, right? I have a whole bunch of people saying they can't get into the meeting. So Ashley, can you handle that and see if they can get them in on you know, Facebook? Um, so when we are looking at this and we are coming across and we are processing these things, how do you want to represent fire in this ritual is the next aspect. When you're accessing for fire, what is going to be your fire element? Now, here is the cool thing about this. Your fire element does not have to be fire itself. It can be color. It can be flower or fauna, or it can be a deity. As we all know, some, some deities have a little more fire in them than others, correct? So who do you want to be your fire aspect in this? Air will be simple for you. What's your smoke? Remember, no cannabis. <laughs> What's gonna be your smoke for this? Consider where you view your ancestors to be from when you are using your smoke. So those of us that have Celtic, you're going to consider saning herbs. 
So you're going to think the junipers, the pines, the cedars. Those of you that are going Greek, the dittany, the oreganos. Where are you going to? Consider this when you are really pulling in to work on this. Does that make sense? Okay. I know I'm making you actually think about your craft now, aren't I? We're going to get a little deeper this year. This isn't just going to be bullshit stuff anymore, okay? Or if you're a mountain witch, is it the pine? Is it the mugwort? Is it the things along your area that we're burning? What is abundant where your ancestors are from? You know, if your ancestors are from by the sea, how about that gathered seaweed and throw it in a bowl and smoke it? These are the things you need to think about. So when you are taking these massive trips to go see your ancestry places, gather the things you need to do your rituals while you're there. Don't take stones. Don't take bones. Don't take sacred items. But you can observe what's there and source what you need sacredly and most importantly, respectfully. Okay? Now, earth on this one. I'm going to say something I don't ever say. If you have any graveyard dirt, this is the time to pull it out. If you have graveyard dirt, this is the time to use graveyard dirt. If there is a sacred place for your family, this is the time to use the sacred dirt. You know, many of us have family homesteads where it all came from, where we're all from. Some of us have access to those. Still, that's where you want that dirt. Other than that, go get your sacred dirt and use your sacred dirt. Where do I want you to put it? Under your fucking feet. I want you to put a nice soft towel or, or white sheet or tea towel below your feet, wherever you're working, and put your feet in that dirt. At least a little bit of it. This comes to the time where we got to get a little dirt a little blood on us, a little things. Now, when you have wrapped your cord around your candle, comes the most important part of this process. You're going to bleed on that cord. I know, you're all sitting there getting a little wheezy and a little woozy and wondering how this is done. Well, if you're a pussy, you can go get some lancets and pop that finger and put a little blood on there. If you are feral, you just, and roof, you just cut and go. Blood is different for every witch. There's a big controversy in the witch world right now. You can't use blood to do your rituals. Don't tell me what I can fucking do. Because if it's the right time of the month, I'll just slide that right through my thighs and we'll just get to town on this. Blood is blood. You are the witch. This is your cord. No one's going to be using your cord and no one should use your cord. When you are done with your cord, you dispose of your cord properly. How is that? You fucking burn it. It goes back as an offering to your ancestors. These cords should not be passed down. They should not be traded around. They shouldn't be given to people. These are your cords. When you are making a sacred ritual item, it is your item. This brings me back to don't buy cords from other people. If you want a beautiful cord to decorate your altar, buy one from your favorite creator. But don't expect that cord to fucking do anything for you. I'm sorry. It won't. It's not yours. Just like the spells you get off Pinterest, the spells you gather from books, they're not yours. You're feeding someone else's magic. They have tag locks on their spell work. What kind of witch are they if they don't? When you write a spell, it comes from the center of you, correct? When you craft a cord, it's going to come from the center of you. When you pour a candle, it comes from the center of you. Anything you make in the craft that has your intention, your consecration, and your magic attached to it is you. That means if you hand it to someone else, they got a part of you. 
and can use it accordingly. Remember that. If they are not a smart creator and they don't cut themselves from those crafts before they go out, you got a whole lot of them at your disposal. If you're making your magic. How many of you got boxes for me and you're like, oh, when you open them, why? Because some people's boxes I don't cut. Some people don't get cut boxes. Because they're part of my sisterhood and I trust them and I love them. And I send them a full punched box. When it's somebody I don't know, I cut myself from that. And my intention is to come back. How you feed your magic is your decision. This coming year, we're going to learn how to feed our magic. How to control our magic. And how to multiply our magic once it's out in the world. If somebody has something of yours and they're using it in an unjust fashion, you have every bit of control to still attach to that item. It's an interesting concept and not a lot of people want to discuss it, but it makes a lot of sense. A lot of us are creators and we know how much we put into something and every ounce of us goes into that. Now some of you are gardening at a, a level you haven't before. You're crafting at a level you haven't before. And it really, really, really needs to be intent on how you're managing that energy flow around your spell work. Does that make sense? So this whole exercise at this point in time is for you to create the cord, to complete your personal circle. You have the wreath to set in the middle of your altar space and hold all your elements. And you have the effigy. Who's the effigy? That's you. You're the effigy. So now comes a time where you dress your effigy. Dress your effigy with energy, with intention. This girl is going to get a pretty little skirt on her now. She's going to get some colors on her now. Dress her to match your cord. Whatever you're putting on your cord, put on her. But remember, you're burning her. So don't put things you highly value on her. I've taken my effigy and I've been soaking her in lavender and mugwort. The last two weeks, I've been spraying her every day. Lavender and mugwort. Lavender because it's a cueing for Hecate for me. And mugwort because it's my passage herb. Now this week, I will paint her with a mixture of pomegranate juice and my blood. I will paint her down and that will be her anointing to go in. You need to make something to anoint yourself and anoint your doll. She's a poppet. You made your own poppet. It's time to stuff her now. Every poppet should have stuffing. Now we don't have the insides available in this one. So I, cause I didn't want to quite go that far when we started. So you're going to make her a little sack, make her a little mojo bag to tie onto her and fill her with the herbs of offering for your ancestors. Every poppet should be stuffed or carry a satchel of herbs. She is a living. He is a living. It is a living being that you are infusing with magic. This effigy is making the step from just being an item on your altar now, which has been sitting with you, correct? Has been sitting with you this whole time, absorbing your magic through all this time. Now you're getting her ready to go do the ritual. And when you have your fire going or your offering going, you're going to put her in and burn her as she enters the veil. That's the point here. You are releasing what was, what you were at that point that you made that doll to come out the other side, something new. Because part of your boot camp is you're going to make a doll of yourself for your altar. And she's not going to look like a poppet. She's going to be a very live straw doll or string doll that you carry with you through the coming year. 
and she will be anointed and used in each ritual as a primary source of your magic. You have to start using actual spell work items. This is not called a craft because it's just something we do once in a while. You should be crafting at every ritual for items to use. Spell work is not a, oh, I just do that shit on the fly. Nice to hear you're lazy, but that's not what real witch work is. And I know people don't want to hear that, but real witch work takes time. And it takes planning. This has been an exhausting sow and seance for you, hasn't it? So been a lot to do. You're welcome. This is how witch work looks. We decide what we're going to do at the next step and we work till we get there. Your liminal work should start looking like that. Every time you go in to work in the liminal, it should be, well, she's telling me all these things I need to do. And she's telling me all these things I need to do. Well, what are you learning in your dream state? Who are you meeting? What are you seeing? I don't remember my dreams. Why? Why don't you remember your dreams? Not remembering your dreams is not being awoken by source. I said it. I fucking said it out loud. This 2025 is going to be the year of sissy saying the thing out loud. You're not fucking awake if you don't remember your dreams. It has nothing to do other than the fact that you are not connected and you are not receiving. We're going to cover connection. This Alan, how many of you at Solstice Seance connected and had that deep, intense feeling? How fast did it dissipate? I can explain to you why it did. Do you really want to know? Do you really want me to tell you why? Because you didn't fucking work at it. You didn't maintain the candles. You didn't maintain the contact. You didn't maintain the narrative with source to create that bond. If you don't look clinically insane, you're not witching. I'm sorry. We are not for the faint of heart. It's a lot of work to be the village crazy lady. A lot of fucking work. We trust our intuition because our intuition is connected to source. If your intuition is not connected to source, you're full of shit. Literally. You have to open the space to receive the message. You can't get mail in your mailbox when you're on vacation when it's stuffed full. The postmaster stops, right? So if you are so stuffed full of everything you've read and everything you've written and everything you've seen, and you don't take time to release it on full moons, you don't take time to write it in your journals or put it in your grimoires and get it the fuck out and clear space for new information, source is looking at you going, she's got all she can handle. I ain't got no more for her. She will not move us forward. She will not bring our message to what we need. There is no point in having this conversation because she doesn't hear me. If you don't open and you don't create space and you don't do the work, you're not going to get the next level. And I know you want the next level because we're not doing this to stay in place because running in place is hard. We got big boobs and it's exhausting. Okay, we're not little girls anymore. We're not just little girls. When we run in place, we get tired. And I know some of you are tired of treading water. That's why you come week after week to find out the secret. Do you know what the secret is? Fucking hard work. And nobody wants to know that secret. Because you got to do it. There's no excuse for it. So in preparation for Thursday night, I want you to really think about your rope. I want you to think about this rope. Some of you are going, I'm going to make a rope and hang myself. I do not want to do this. <laughs> I want you to think about your rope. I want you to think about how you're dressing your effigy. I want you to think about if you're going to use poppy seeds or you're going to use mustard seeds. I know you got both in your kitchen. Unless you're allergic to one and then you can just use the other, okay? Like, I'll be honest with you. I know some people are deathly allergic to poppy seeds and they don't have them. That's why I chose two. 
mustard seeds or poppy seeds. You have to have these in your offering bags for the liminal. They're important. And they're going to smell so good when they burn. I promise. They're going to smell so good. I throw mustard seeds in my fire all the time because they just smell so good. How are you opening with those elements? What is your spirit telling you about this? I really want you to sit into meditative space and really journal what you want from this meeting. There's a part of me that wanted to hold this for Dark Moon, but I really think at the highest illumination is your best chance to see spirit. I don't think the dark is the best for everyone. And I want everybody to get that experience. I want you to get the full moon illumination of this working. Plus, it's kind of scary out there right now at night. You're going outside to work. I'd much rather you have a full moon to light your way than total darkness. Because I know you're, some of you are chicken shits right now. So you go outside. I want you to have the full moon to support your work. <laughs> and the, also the beauty of this is you can draw down the moon to participate in your ritual. You can pull her strength into your ritual to support you from behind as you go forward. Make sense? We covered a lot of stuff. You're like, and you didn't even give us a PDF. Just hold on. We'll get there. Okay. <laughs> I need you to really understand that this is the hard part of the workshop. And you're all going, bitch, this has all been the hard part of the workshop. <laughs> this is the hard part because this brings it all together. If you hadn't noticed, this is the weaving part of the exercise. This is where you take all the parts you've made and weave them together to be magic. So I'm going to conclude this as a live, and then I will take any questions you guys have. Thank you for joining tonight. You're magic as you fucking say you are. The recording will be up shortly, and the PDF will hit the store by late Tuesday, early Wednesday.